Hi friends. Are you ready? Revelation chapter 21. We just finished the lake of fire and brimstone. Now we're going into the last two chapters of the book of Revelation filled with some of the most beautiful promises found in the entire Bible. I love it. So in, uh, we're starting Re Revelation chapter 21 verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea, no more large uh, oceans. The oceans will be gone. We'll just have rivers and lakes and ponds and streams and no more large oceans. Well, that's a wonderful promise. I am excited about that. A new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. Praise the Lord. And I, John, John the Beloved, on the Isle of Patmos, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned, clothed for her husband. Well, here comes the new Jerusalem right down upon this planet. And we saw that in the last chapter uh, when uh, Satan and, the, and his angels and the wicked surrounded the beloved city and, and tried to overcome it and how they were, had their experience in the lake of fire and brimstone. And so... He's describing the city coming down, looking like a bride adorned for her husband. We know that Jesus Christ is the husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold the tabernacle, the tent, the sanctuary, the temple, the dwelling place of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Wow, God is going to come and live here on earth. Woo! And the earth made new. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. No more pain or suffering, no more death, no more sin. And God's going to, it's just going to be like it was always supposed to be. We're all going to live happily ever after and be blessed. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Everything's brand new. Our bodies, the earth. It's going to be wonderful, friends. Absolutely wonderful. No more pollution. No more bad smells. Everything's going to be so uplifting, inspiring, and wonderful. And he said unto me, Write. Write these words down. For these words are true and faithful. They are true. They're not a lie. They're faithful. They will come to pass. Write it down. And so John did. He wrote it down for us. And he said to me, It is done. When Jesus was on the cross, just before he died, he said, It is finished. And then he gave up the ghost, the breath of life, and died. Uh, at the seventh last plague... When the angel poured out the vial of the seventh last plague, there was a great earthquake and said, It is done. And now we have one, another reference to this. In, uh, we're in chapter 21, verse 6. It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is thirsty of the fountain of the water of life freely. We can drink the water of life, we can eat the fruit from the tree of life, and we don't die anymore. We don't feel pain anymore. We're happy, we're blessed. We're finally there. We're finally home. He that overcomes, I believe that's overcoming the carnal sinful nature, and partaking of the, div of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, through desire, he that overcomes shall inherit all things, everything. And I will be his God and he shall be my son, my daughter, my child. We're all going to be brought in as God's children here <clears throat> as we overcome our, sin, our sinful carnal nature. But the fearful, those who are afraid, the unbelieving, the doubters, the abominable, the filthy, and the murderers, and whoremongers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, witches and warlocks, the idolaters, atheists, and all liars telling lies shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. 
Friends, you got to get it right the first time. This is our opportunity in our lifetime to get right with God. So we don't have to go through the lake of fire and brimstone. We are baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And if we don't get cleaned up and purified in this generation in our lifetime, think of it. The, fire, the lake of fire and brimstone is going to be a very excruciating, painful process. We don't want to go there. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, John, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. Now, who's the bride? We were already introduced to her as New Jerusalem, right? And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, which showed me and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Having the glory of God. Now, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. Now, the word wife in the Greek also means woman. This is Jesus' woman. This is his wife. Described as a city, but I personally believe it's more than a city. I believe she's a person. But let's, um, now in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 7, it says that, but the woman is the glory of the man. <clears throat> and let's take a look here for a moment in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 25 verse 8 God tells Moses, And let them make me a sanctuary, a temple, a dwelling place, a tent or tabernacle, that I may dwell among them. And so he did. He built the tabernacle and uh, the, tent, the tent of meeting. And in uh, the last chapter of Exodus, chapter 40, verses 34 to 38, Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, the, uh, the church of the Israelites, the people. A cloud covered the tent... Of the congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle the glory of the Lord the Shekinah glory S-H-E Shekinah 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 glory the visible manifestation of the presence of God and Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode or stayed thereon and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle and when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel were, went onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed, journeyed not until the day it was taken up in their wilderness journeys. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel through all, out all their journeys. <clears throat> So that was God's presence. And they could see it every day. They could look up and see the cloud over the sanctuary, the tent of meeting, the tabernacle. And every night if they looked up, they saw that fire, the pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day. They had that visible presence symbol of God right there with them day, every day, every night. And God wants to dwell in you and I. He wants to fill us full of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of God. Uh, let's go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 for a moment. In uh, verse, uh, verse 11, 11 to 15. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest or revealed. For the day, judgment day, shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall test or try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide or continue which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. In other words, if you build with gold, silver, and precious stones, you're going to get a great heavenly reward. If any man's work shall be burned, wood, hay, and stubble, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now, what does this mean? He will suffer loss. He didn't get the heavenly rewards. He didn't build with the right materials. There's the wise man building on the rock, 
and his house stood the test of storm and tempest and flood. But the foolish man who built on the sand, his house was swept away. If any man's work get burned up, he him, he him he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. This is 1 Corinthians 3 verse 15. He will be saved, but as by fire. He lost the rewards. He lost the heavenly re rewards that he could have had. But he will be saved, but he has to go through the fire. Now there's another verse here in 1617. Know you not that you are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man defile, pollute, or corrupt the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which you are. And so, that's what God's fire does. It purifies, it cleanses, it makes whole, it heals. And so, that's why we have to let go of sin. Otherwise, it, the old man must die that the new man might live. We, the, we have to be born again, born from above. Uh, there's another one here in... Um, the book just before Revelation called Jude. And take a look at this here in Jude. Um, let's see which verse is it here. Verse 22, 23. And of some people have compassion making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment, the clothing spotted by the flesh, the sins of the flesh. So some have compassion making a difference. Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. The lake of fire and brimstone, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now in him that, unto him that is able to keep you from falling into sin and corruption, and to present you faultless, without fault, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever. Amen. Alright, so now let's go back to Revelation 21, and the description of the New Jerusalem, having the glory of God... And her light, she's there, the Shekinah glory is there. Having light like unto a stone, a crystal stone, most precious, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, beautiful gemstones. And had a wall, great and high, and twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And this represents all of God's people from Old Testament times, from Genesis all the way up to Malachi, all of the faithful believers are represented here. And on the east there were three gates. On the north, south, and west were three gates on each side. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Now this represents all the New Testament Christians from, from the birth of Christ all the way to the end of uh, time here on earth. All the New Testament believers are here and so we got all of God's people from all time here in the New Jerusalem. And he that talked with me, the angel that talked with me, had a golden reed like a measuring tape to measure the city and the gates and the wall. And the city is four square, and the length is as large as the width. And he measured the city, 12,000 furlongs, the length and the width and the height are equal. So in my mind, this is like a three-dimensional cube. It's like a square box. Each side is equal. The height and the width and the length are all equal sizes. It's just like a huge square box. That's the shape of it. It's a square shape of the city. And it's a huge city. I'm not sure. It could be miles long and miles high. It's a huge city. Big enough for everybody to go in there and find their own apartment. And he measured the wall, 144 cubits, according to the measure of the man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall were garnished or put together with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third caseldony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprasus, the eleventh the jacinth, and the twelfth an amethyst. Beautiful, beautiful gemstones. It's going to be a glorious and beautiful city. And imagine if the rainbow around the throne of God shines in there. It's just going to light up everything with glittering, beautiful lights. Greater than anything I've ever seen on Christmas Day celebrations. <clears throat> 
going to be awesome. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each gate was one huge pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, like an, as it were, transparent glass. A beautiful place to go and visit. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither the moon, to shine in it, because the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb, Jesus, is the light of it. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. No more night time. It's going to be daytime 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. No more night time. And uh, the gates are o never closed. They're always open. We can always go back and forth from the city out into the earth made new, looking around, exploring, uh, building our house, uh, training our vines, our vineyards, our grapevines, and just living life happily ever after the way we would want to and carrying forward our projects. And let's continue here. Now we're in um, verse 26. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Yes, they will come in, but... And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiles, pollutes, or corrupts, neither whatever works an abomination or filthiness or uncleanness, or makes a lie or tells lies, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. To get in, no, no sinners are going to go into heaven. If you're going to get into this kingdom, this beautiful city, this paradise of God, you have to follow the steps. The conditions are always the same. God's law never changes. It's love for God and love for people. And we have to repent of our sinful condition and get our, our uh, dirty minds and hearts cleaned up by the Spirit and presence of God and obeying His commandments and doing the right things so that we can be prepared and fitted as candidates for, for heaven and for the earth made new. We must become, well, the Scripture says, Be ye holy, for the Lord your God is holy. And no man can see the Lord, uh, see how's that go, without holiness shall no man see the Lord. So to see the Lord in the full glory, we have to be holy beings. To see the Lord in all His glory, we have to be holy beings. We have to conform our mind, our thinking, our imagination, and our behaviors in line with God's law. I like uh, Psalms 19, the last verse there. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations, the thinking and imaginations of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. All right. Well, God bless you, friends. Uh, thank you for tuning in.